Hey everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes. So, I was just sitting at home, got back from work, minding my own business, you know, thinking about what I should make for dinner, I should order out, and then at 7.30 p.m., all of a sudden, I get a prompt and a push notification on my phone that the new Fae trailer is out. So, uh, here we are, recording this. Now, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like the English version is out. I think that this was uh, listed by accident. Uh, because now that I'm in the site, or when I was on the page, it said unlisted. <laughs> so, uh, clearly, uh, they did not intend for us to have access to this right now. But, hey, what better time than now to just watch it and react to it raw? Uh, I'm not going to know what any of the skills are or what they're saying, but that is totally fine because... After it's all said and done, um, we'll probably release a separate video about the skills and evaluating the skills. But um, since this is already live and it's going to be all over the internet, I figure I may as well just watch it right now, raw, without any uh, spoilers. Uh, I did see that the trailer picture was Lysithia, so I'm not going to pretend that I didn't see that. It came up on the push notification, and I, I was surprised, looked at it, because I wasn't expecting a Fae trailer right now. Um, so that's been spoiled for me, but as for who else is on the banner, I have no idea. And uh, presumably, uh, it is a Three Houses-themed banner. But let's just go ahead and get started and watch it together for the first time. Alright, so I'm looking away right now, and I'll look back after the splash... And I'll look back right about now. All right. Oh, no. Aww, Bernie. Okay, so she's a cavalry archer. That's pretty... Uh, Bernie is super, super popular in Japan, so that is uh, to be expected. She looks like she's getting a push four skill as well as a, a, dull, uh, a dull something skill for the B slot. Um, oh, it's, uh, it's a net, right? Yeah. And she is a an infantry axe user. Alright, so she only has four skills. So maybe she's the demote? Who knows? Throwing that out there. Oh wow, is that Ferdinand? Yeah. Yeah, it is Ferdinand. Alright, cavalry lancer. So we got two cavalry, one infantry. He's got a new solo skill. Uh, or no, not solo skill. That was a C slot skill. It's the um, I forget what they're called. And then we've got Lysithia, of course, who was teased during the Fae channel. It's very cute art, very soft looking art. Um, so we've got an infantry red tome user. Looks like she's got death blow four, lull skill, quick um, times pulse. Was that times pulse for the for the uh, C slot there? I'm not sure. Cool animation effect for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it is a Three Houses themed banner, uh, as predicted. There's... What? Surter? What the hell is Surter doing there? Uh, let's pause here. Okay, that's the Flame Emperor. Uh, so, Flame Emperor. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, axe... Axe something. I don't know. Axe armor, potentially. Probably, if I had to guess. Uh, and it looks like we will be getting... The Flame Emperor for free as, what, probably a Grand Hero Battle, I would think? Seems very appropriate for it to be a Grand Hero Battle. So let's keep going. Okay, so starting on March 6th, which I think for us would be, what, March 7th, then, on our side of things, we'll be getting this banner. Even distribution of colors, we have Bernie, Annette, Ferdinand, and Lysithia. Lots of Black Eagle representation here. And uh, don't know what their skills are, but they look pretty great. Lots of fan favorites here. Bernie, Lysithia, in particular, I think are very, very popular. Ferdinand has certainly his own following, and Annette as well. So I think people will certainly be chomping at the bit for these characters, without a doubt, pretty much. So yeah, this has never happened before. I don't know how we're going to handle this one. We might just put out this video really quickly so that people can, I guess, follow along and see the trailer uh, before they take it down. Uh, and then, I don't know, I guess we'll release maybe another video going over the skills. I feel like most people watch the reaction and then don't actually watch me ramble on about the skills. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Now, like I said, I can't really go back and take a look at the skills because I, I don't know what they are. I can try to interpret them, but that's just a waste of your time and my time. So definitely don't want to waste your time. I'm, my time is whatever, but <laughs> your time is valuable. Uh, so I don't want to waste that. 
Um, but what I can do is take a closer look at the art. So let, maybe we do that. And then at the end, we'll decide whether or not we do a separate video for the skills. If people are interested in hearing me ramble about that, uh, let's, let's go back. Let's go back and take a, a look at, um, and let's take a quick look at Bernie here. <laughs> she looks very, uh, very reluctant. I will say, uh, they did a great job. She looks a little on the young side. I mean, she, she always looks very kind of frettered and, um, she has kind of her signature tousled hair and, and like spats look going. So, you know, it's Bernie, it's Bernie. We all know and love Bernie. Um, I, I suspect she'll have some really great voice lines. All right. And okay. We've got, oh, she's singing. It's like the, um, it's like the creepity creep song. I, I don't know if that's what she's, what she's saying in Japanese or not, but uh, if I had to interpret that, my, the official Guardian e-translation is cre creepity creep. Uh, so she's a, an infantry axe user. Uh, she looks cute. She's cute. She's cute. Uh, overall looks good. The art's clean. I th you know, that is, that's Annie. And that, that's her to a T. Uh, geez, that axe. That axe, though. Um, yeah, so it's it's like double the size of her. She's a tiny thing. But yeah, pretty standard art. Not like really, really super dynamic or anything, which is, I feel like a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a letdown. I, I think they could have gone a little bit crazier with the uh, the attacking art itself. <laughs> There's Ferdinand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's his signature pose, and it's like, uh, what is it, like pictures you can hear? <laughs> He's, even though I don't understand Japanese, I can, I can basically hear him talking about his lineage. Which is, uh, that's fine. The, taking zero damage, though. Alright, th see, that's, that's a little bit more dynamic. I do like that. He's, he's kind of striking a pose. He's got a smile on his face, too, as he's going in on it. He's certainly more confident than Bernie or Annette, so it does make sense. Uh, don't want to take away from Bernie or Annette in that capacity. All right, so here's Lysithia. The art is super, super familiar. I can't place the artist. I'm guess is it the same artist that did Legendary Tiki, maybe? And I can't remember who that is. Uh, it, it might not be. I might be misplacing it. But but regardless, there's a lot of I guess signature softness to the art style itself. There's a lot of like soft coloring, soft lighting. Soft line work, a lot of kind of fluff, like floof to the hair a little bit as it poofs out. So it kind of has that lightness to it, I suppose, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, no, she looks good. So here's her attacking art, very action posy. I do like it. Actually, looking at this now, it it like reinforces to me that this is the same artist that did Halloween Noe. So I think I think we got it right. Uh, let's keep going, and we'll see this attack animation again. Beautiful. That's nice. All right. And then, like I said, we're going to get a new story chapter, which is very exciting. And Surtur is here for whatever reason. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a nightmare or something. And then, oh, I just noticed there's Helbindi too. So Helbindi, the true hero of book two, is here as well. I don't know if they're back for real or if this is just a dream, because obviously book four is centered around dreams and nightmares. So who knows? We'll, we'll have to see. But would love to see Helbindi make a return just because Helbindi is, uh, is awesome. And of course, as luck would have it, as soon as I finish recording and start closing things out, we get the English version of the banner that drops. So har Harmony Amid Chaos is what we're looking for. Um, I'm just gonna kind of skip through this just because we've seen these characters. Uh, we can sort of listen to their voice lines, I guess. Eternal Loner is Bernie. That's a very... Oh. <laughs> very cute. All right, so let's take a look at her skills. So we've got Persecution Bow is a 14 might weapon, range two, effective against flying foes, grants attack plus three. At start of combat, if penalty is active on unit or unit's HP is less than 100%, grants attack speed plus 5 during combat. So it's an in-combat buff. If unit initiates combat, unit can make a follow-up attack before the foe can counterattack. I see. Okay. So Bernie essentially has a plus 5 to her offensive stats as long as she has some sort of debilitating effect on her. So if, she's, uh, if she is debuffed in some way or she is hurt in some way, then she will get a plus attack speed uh, attack speed plus five, which is very easy to accomplish. Um, so that's a, a very easy condition, a very strong effect. If unit initiates combat, unit can make a follow-up attack. So it, it's also built in desperation without an HP condition. All she has to do is uh, initiate on the foe. That is very strong. 
That is very strong. Uh, presumably she's going to be pretty quick. And she's going to get a further speed boost when she is below 100% health. And I can already see that she has attack speed push 4, as we noted earlier, just from the icon. Which means after her first initiation, she is going to take some damage, which will meet the condition of Persecution Bow. So that is a strong effect. Ardent Sacrifice for the assist also further uh, uh, helps to trigger that condition, uh, because that will essentially... Uh, sacrifice her own health and put her in the below 100% health category in order to meet that buff condition. Lull Speed Defense 3, the lull skills are awesome. Uh, inflicts Speed Defense minus 3 on foe and neutralizes foe's bonuses to speed and defense uh, during combat. Strong effect for her in particular, since she wants to make sure she can double, lull speed makes perfect sense. Defense lull also makes perfect sense, just because that'll let her do more damage. So it's perfect. And for her, the B-slot isn't as important. She doesn't need desperation in the B-slot, because she has it built into her bow. So she doesn't have to worry about that, which means she can take full advantage of the lull skills as well. Uh, close guard for the C-slot. Allies within two spaces gain... Uh, yeah, no, we, we've seen that before. So... Uh, honestly, she's pretty strong. I mean, I don't know what her stat line is going to be. Naturally, a lot hinges on that, but it sounds like she's trying to get below H below 100% uh, HP to meet that condition, and then she's going to have a lot of offensive buffs, and then she's going to bank on doubling the enemy and having kind of built-in desperation. So yeah, Bernie is packing. I mean, all things considered, Bernie is definitely packing. I think her, her skills synergize very, very well together. Uh, Close Guard 3 is kind of an oddball choice. Um, she just kind of gives a, a, sort of a passive buff to uh, to her allies um, against melee damage, which is which is fine. It's, it's definitely a fine effect. But um, everything else kind of meshes very well with helping Persecution Bow do what it needs to do. So let's keep going. And we can kind of hear her voice line again. All right. Over, uh, overachiever. They totally, they didn't even do the creepity creep. What, I was totally waiting for the creepity creep line. All right, let's pause here. Uh, so her weapon, non-inheritable, is going to be Crusher, 16 might weapon. Grants attack plus three, that's familiar. Calculates damage using the lower of foes res or defense. Oh, whoa, really? She has adaptive damage? So this is the... I And somebody in the comments is going to correct me, I know. I, I think this is the first time we've seen adaptive damage outside of specific skills, like built into weapons other than dragon weapons. I could be wrong. I know it's built into other skills, uh, but I don't think we've seen it built into other weapons other than dragon weapons. That's actually pretty big. Uh, if a rally assist skill is used by unit, target can move one extra space. That is so fascinating. That turn only does not stack. No enemy, uh, no effect on cavalry allies with range equal to two. So it's not a position-based uh, assist. That's an important distinction. It is a rally-based assist, which means it's a buff. It's not a movement-based, so it's not a shove. It's not a drawback. It's not a reposition. And then the opposing... Uh, or the target unit has an extra space that they can move. That's not the case. It is only rallies. Um, but it gives them one extra space, and and it it also affects cavalry. Like, with, with, not, with, not ranged cavalry, but, like, melee cavalry get, can move four spaces. That is ridiculous. That is really strong. And I, I can already tell that Annie is going to be used for really, really stupid, stupid rally traps in Aether Raid Defense. That, that's clearly what's going to be the case. And frankly, that not even looking at her other skills, clearly that is what she is intended to do. Because with the rally trap, that just means that she's going to go ahead and rally um, whoever the the enemy the unit is that's going to uh, be, uh, that's been triggered and moving forward, and they're going to get an extra movement space. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to lead to a lot of little, like, tricky things for sure. Especially with the cavalry, which isn't something that we've seen before, where melee cavalry get an additional space. Uh, we talked about rally attack speed plus, defense res ruse 3, uh, again, in line with crusher and the effect of having, when you're doing a rally assist on somebody, having that extra effect. The ruse skills work perfectly with her because, of course, if she's using the rally assist on a unit, um, or rather on a target, it inflicts defense res minus five and guard on foes in cardinal directions. That further reinforces in the context of Aether Raid's defense, if she's going to be teleporting around, using her rally skill, activating the crusher on the target, and then in cardinal directions also debilitating units on the opposing side, 
that's a really, really potent combination. Originally, I know I said that Annie was going to be the demote. I, now I really don't think she will be. I mean, this is just a deadly combination of things set up to just make a horrible headache of an opposing uh, Aether Raid's defense map. And then you have attack defense gap 3 for the C slot. At start of turn, grants attack defense plus 5 to ally with the highest attack and defense total for one turn. So to me, this just reads like she's built to be a support to a cavalry melee unit, uh, potentially a gale force user, that'll run in with extra defense, extra attack, uh, debilitating the, the defenses of their target, have extra movement, run in and then kill a target, or, you know, attack into a target enough where they'll activate Gale Force and then kill another target. Yeah, I view this as a pretty scary combination of things, to be completely honest with you. I mean, Annie, Annie's coming out swinging here, and, and it's as a support, but as sort of this very, very specialized Aether Raid support, because th this, all of these things kind of lend themselves to making an Aether Raid trap, so it's... It's pretty. It's kind of interesting that they've, they've tailored her to that as a whole. I don't know how I feel about it, but but it does seem like that is the goal. And there she goes. And then, of course, speaking of melee cavalry, I'm curious to see what he's got. So Vanguard Plus, he's got an inheritable, uh, inheritable lance. If foe initiates combat, grants defense plus seven during. It's you know. Berkut's Lance. I mean, it seems like he might be getting the shaft here. Uh, reposition for the assist. Uh, at least he's reposition fodder. Fortress Defense 3. Oh, wow. Okay. And then Rouse de Speed Defense 3. At sort of turn, if unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants Speed Defense plus 6 unit for one turn. So it's Ferdinand that is going to be the potential demote here. Uh, nothing remarkable, really, about any of his skills at all. I thought, I was actually expecting him to be fully decked out, because we saw Annie, and it really feels like Annie is built to be kind of paired with this really strong offensive cavalry unit, and Ferdinand is not it. So, let's just keep going, because there's really not much to say about that. I'm sure his stat line will be fine, but those skills are nothing special. And then, of course, we've got Lysithia, the Child Prodigy. Alright, so we've got Hades, which is a 14 might red tome, accelerate special trigger, so it's got a slaying killer effect. Uh, if unit initiates combat, grants attack speed plus 4 during combat, so it has built-in Swift Sparrow 2. And if unit special is ready, grants an additional attack plus 6 during combat. Really? Huh. Now, now notice it doesn't say, it's not true damage, it's not saying does 6 extra damage. It's an additional attack plus six, which also means that that should pair with, like, Draconic Aura, right? Because Draconic Aura will be boosted by that, so she'll get an additional plus six attack, and then it'll also add to the Draconic Aura damage of, like, you know, 30% of her attack, so she'd get an extra two damage to Draconic Aura, right? Um, I think. I don't know. That's hypothetical, I guess. That's based upon the reading of this. That sounds like it, how it would work. That's a very, very, very strong tome. A very powerful red tome for sure. We don't really have a shortage of red tome infantry uh, nukers for sure, uh, but it does sound like a very, very powerful combination of things. Again, the slaying effect at the very start. Uh, if unit initiates combat, she has a built-in swift sparrow, and then an extra six attack when uh, her special is ready. So that's definitely a powerful combination of things, but she is competing against Tharja. Well, like, both versions of Tharja. She's competing against uh, Lelina. She's competing against Celica. So we do have some powerful red mages out there, uh, offensive red mages, I should I should specify, um, that are nukers. And so she's competing with the best of them. Um, she has a, a lot of powerful skills here. It is important to note that she is not going to be an AoE user, uh, at least with her default tone, because all of these buffs are in combat buffs, which means you're not going to be seeing those effects and those additional bonuses on an AoE special. These are only going to apply to when she's in combat and that special procs or when she's in combat just in general. Um, so in that actual scene where she's you know firing off her spell. She has Moonbow for her special, which naturally uh, works with Hades since it's a minus one cooldown, so it's that means it would have just a one turn cooldown. Deathblow 4 for the A slot, still a powerful premium skill for sure. For the B slot, lull speed res 3, inflicts speed res minus 3 on foe, and neutralizes foe's bonuses to speed and res. Works perfectly for her. I Honestly, I would have expected lull attack res 3 on her, but I think they wanted to have like a new lull skill. Um, I think that was important for them to diversify and expand on the lull skill pool or the selection. So that's why. Um, and, and not to say that this isn't a good choice for her. 
Uh, hopefully she does have some decent speed so that she can take advantage of the lull speed part of this. But for lull res, I mean, she's definitely happy about that. And then times pulse three for the C slot. And here it is. At start of turn, if special cooldown count is at its max value, grant special cooldown count minus one. So she starts the battle with Moonbow at a one turn uh, cooldown charge. And then she gets an additional charge from times pulse, which means it is at a zero turn cooldown, which means it is ready to proc. So it is built in. She doesn't need the assist from anybody else. It is naturally built or any support or anything. She is, it is naturally built into her that she will have Moonbow ready or Glimmer ready right at the start when she goes into battle with this default kit. So that's definitely powerful, a powerful effect for sure. And Moonbow is not the most powerful special out there, but it is going to assist in her doing additional damage. And her Hades is going to synergize with that by providing an additional six attack. So it'll just tack on additional damage. So yeah, a, a great kit overall, solid, solid stuff, synergizes together, works in tandem with itself um, as an offensive infantry mage. If, you, if you're a fan of Lysathia, you should definitely be happy about it. She's got some stiff competition for sure. Um, but yeah, I think Lysithia does end up bringing the heat uh, in this banner. We can take another look at her. Uh, yeah, okay. Very cool. All right. All right, so the new story chapter is called Twisted Reality, which again features Surtur for some reason and, uh, and Hellbindi over there and the Flame Emperor. So yeah, that is going to be it. Uh, I am so, so sorry for the length of this video because I'm sure it's going to be way too long. Uh, really threw me for a loop here when they accidentally leaked the trailer. But for those of you who stuck around up to this point, leave a comment down below that you were the real troopers and decided to watch all the way to the end. Um, we, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys get all of the characters that you're looking for on this banner. If you are going to pull on this banner, let us know in the comments below who your targets are. We really, really appreciate you taking time out of your days to spend with us. And until next time, let's protect those skies.